quick disclaimer, we are not investigative journalists. We simply read, watch, and listen to whatever we can to satisfy our curiosity while use this information to form our own personal opinions. Do not take this as investigative journalism. This is simply our own rabbit holes. Hello, friends, and get ready. We're going to talk about the docs, the crimes, and all the people involved. This is Crime and Chill. <laughs> Hey guys, I'm Victoria. I'm Rachel. How are you? I am over-caffeinated, but you know, life is life. You're always over-caffeinated in your ADHD self. I, I, there's not enough caffeine really until there is too much. Not until suddenly at that point you're like, oh. As I keep drinking it. Is it a, what is that? It looks like grape soda. I don't remember the flavor this is called. Supposedly they're not good for you. I don't care. Um, it's a tea. You have tea, I have coffee. I had coffee this morning and an energy drink. So, what we got in crime world for the new crimes and not the older crimes that we talk about. So, today, a 49-year-old teacher was arrested for allegedly pulling the hair of a student. Um, Jennifer Wells Jackson was charged with risk of injuries to a minor and second-degree breach of peace. Apparently, there was an altercation with the student, and during this, Jennifer grabbed her by the hair. Well, that was life. I mean, I don't think the charges are qualmed all of that. Well, here's the thing, and this is why I wanted to talk about it, because, I mean, honestly, as much as it sucks, we see stuff with teachers yes. every day. But was this something where she was just trying to separate them? Um, no, apparently it was just an altercation between her and the student. So, but here's the thing. This school district in Connecticut has been making headlines a lot lately, because oh. Jennifer is the fourth teacher to be arrested since November. For beating up her students? For doing anything with students. Um, starting off the chain of events, we have Paul Vercello, V-E-R-I-C-I-L-L-O. What did he do? Um, he was charged in November of 2021 with risk of an injury to a minor third degree assault and disorderly conduct for allegedly assaulting a student. Okay, so assault. Keep um, December 2021, Duran Beasley was charged with risk of an injury to a minor second degree reckless endangerment and third degree assault after an altercation with a student. Okay. And then in January, Sonette Powell was charged with possession of a weapon on school grounds and breach of peace after allegedly bringing a gun onto school grounds. Okay, and then this woman. Yeah. All right, so my next question would be, well, what are, th are these kids doing that are causing these teachers to flip? Or is this just a bad neighborhood where the kids are un rowdy and don't know how to behave and the teachers have finally reached their fucking breaking point? Um, so, okay, I'm sorry. I just found the thing. Um, she, the student that with Jennifer was 12 years old. Mm-hmm. Um, she pulled her hair while the student was screaming for her to stop. So are they just hiring teachers that don't need to be teachers? There's not really like anything a, that's telling me, like, what's going on. Well, what's the neighborhood again? The school? Yeah, where, where's the school located? Connecticut. What city? No, New Haven School Board. President is the one that spoke out with comments. Your chance of being a victim of a violent crime in New Haven is 1 in 145. And property crime is 1 in 28. It's like any other major city. So. Yeah. Is 1.6 times higher than the national average, though, and 93% higher than other U.S. cities. So, yes, this is a crime-ridden area. Still, teachers, um, no, you, can, you can't be touching they're, people. They're hiring teachers also because they can't get other teachers to want to work here, so they're hiring wherever they can get a teacher, not doing this community any justice. Anyways... So, yeah, I just was like, what the hell is going on in Connecticut? But y'all need to chill. I don't know what y'all doing over there, but y'all need to chill. Take a chill pill. Stop freaking assaulting people. It ain't that serious, boo. Eat a moon pie. Have a Mountain Dew. <laughs> have some coffee. Have some tea. We have another child crime that we're going to talk about. Always with the child crimes. It, it's coming to its end. It's coming to its end. Well, yeah, we're definitely making sure we're going to stop talking about children also real quick to address this because i thought it was funny that one of my friends actually brought it up to me um i know it was probably disturbing to some of you that we were eating candy while talking about adam walsh mm. again it's a disconnect guys if i didn't then i would really be done it's not and again being... this is why rachel's coming away from so much crime tv and going to trash tv so yeah again we're not crazy assholes or anything we just know where to get our things done so Rachel, what you got today? All right, so today's case, um, as a mother, it's really hard to listen. I've listened to 911 calls. I've listened to jury information. I've listened to court hearing. It, it is hard to listen to. I'm going to tell it to you anyways, and I wanted to know what you think about this. 
Okay. So not many women sit on death row, especially compared to men. Um, you just talked about a story that a woman sentenced to life. She was sentenced to life and sent to death because she was yeah. a woman, yeah. Because it wasn't, it's not usually acceptable. Yeah. One of those women who are sitting on death row are Darlie Router. Darlie has been sitting on death row and filing more appeals than any other case I've probably seen. She was convicted of capital murder of her child. She has always maintained that she was innocent and the, that an intruder entered her home and killed two of her three children, as well as injured her. Alrighty, biggest red flag, just from that little area alone, from the start, was that she had been charged and convicted of one of the deaths. Uh -huh. Not both. If they are both killed with the same weapon at the same time, why wouldn't they have went for both death penalties? The other one has never seen justice. Well... That's if you believe she did it the first time. But they were both killed same day, same time, same weapon, same way. Okay. If they got one conviction, a double conviction would hold up better if this was ever, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. But no, they never done it. With that red flag in mind, let's kind of go over the, the case. And I just went way too far in my notes, Sarah. All right. So at 2.31 on a July morning of 1996, Darlene calls 911 to her home saying that a traitor just broke in and attacked her two oldest children and slit her throat. Police arrive within, ten, within three minutes. When the police arrive, one of the children is still alive, as well as Darlie. Okay? Okay. They find a sc window screen in the garage, which would provide an intruder access to the home, but the intruder was nowhere in sight when they searched the property and surrounding areas. Paramedics were not given access to the victims until police cleared the home. This is normal. Especially because the homeowners did not know if the intruder was, if there was any other intruders there. It's normal. Like, I don't know about you guys, but I watch a lot of, like, Night Watch and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, they can't. They can't go in and they, you will hear them say that police secured scene, they can go. Yeah, they have to make sure. They cannot risk more bodies to save a body. You know what I mean? Yep. They're, um, and the police are very efficient at cle clearing houses. They do it as fast as possible. Yeah. And Especially at a house. Like, there's only so many places you can hide in the house. Yeah, so Darlie told police that she had fallen asleep on the couch and woke up to an intruder in her home. When she sees him, she goes to approach him. He runs off, dropping the knife. Out of instinct, she picks up the knife and realizes that not only is she injured, but both of her sons were as well. Police were suspicious and said there was no blood in the garage and they didn't think a person fit through the window. And they found it unbelievable that she didn't wake up after she and her boys were attacked. I mean, definitely weird, but it happens. So, there, there's a lot of things I don't get. One man, two small boys, and herself. Her husband's upstairs sleeping with their seventh bundle, Drake. Okay. They don't wake up either. That is weird that nobody woke up. Unless the first boy was stabbed to death fatally with the first slice, I have a hard time understanding how did not one of the boys scream out in pain. Yeah. Um, Darlie does wake up to her son tapping her saying, Mom. Okay. She immediately wakes up. And she didn't feel the wound on her neck. I mean, that could have been adrenaline, though. Yeah, um, very much could have been adrenaline. Or they they insist it was self-inflicted. Um, or I personally think maybe she was a hard sleeper. I mean, my son literally jumps on top of me in the middle of the night, gets in my bed. I don't usually feel it. No, you you sleep very hard. You so, always have, though. Like, I mean, as long as I've known you, like, you don't... It takes me forever if I've had to wake you up. To me, it's... Could it happen? Possibly. Like, I can actually see why that could happen. But also, if my kids were screaming, I'd wake up. Yeah. It's like your brain's trained as a mom to know the difference. Yeah. I just don't understand the husband upstairs sleeping, and he didn't wake up either. Yeah, so if she did commit the heinous crime, even if it was her doing it, how did the husband not hear anything either? Yeah, that's weird. Um, Darlie's wound was just millimeters from her corduroid cart. Parotid artery. Parotid artery. They claimed it was superficial. Okay. Unless this woman is a surgeon, how did she just manage to get just close enough to not kill herself, but also close enough to look like an actual wound? You know what I mean? Like, there's, I don't see, and there's pictures that we'll post online, but I don't see how the, this could be on purpose. Let me tell you a little bit more about Darlie and her life prior to this night, though. She would be what I call a Barbie doll. A Barbie doll. She had beautiful blonde hair. Her makeup's always done. She's always dressed to the T. She was very vain in her appearance. 
as you should be sometimes. I'm fine with that. Yep, and and she lived she lived in Texas and oh uh, normal in the early nineties. This normal. was big. Like you did not go out without looking your best. Nope, you did not. And she took pride in how she looked. She was very beautiful. She still, I mean, Good. she still is pretty, but she's she was very beautiful back then. You should take pride in how you look. Everybody should. No, but you're scarred in your neck that I never see. Mm-hmm. But you are so self conscious about that. Mm-hmm. Would you purposely? Put a scar somewhere that someone's going to see all the time if you were a vain person. No. Okay, that's what I don't get. Why would she have sliced her own throat when she could have sliced her wrist, sliced her arm, sliced her hand, sliced her thigh? Anything else where it wouldn't have been seen. You know? But yes. your neck. And she is always seen wearing the low V-necks of the early 90s um, crop tops. So, like, this woman... I just got self-conscious about it again. <laughs> I don't ever notice it. The only reason I thought about that was because of the... And it's, like, the story. It's, it's because I, I, you know, I'm self-conscious about it. And, like, I will say, I don't know, it's so bad. Which is really not. Um, just so everybody, I can explain that real quick, guys. I do have a scar on my neck. I had thyroid cancer. My thyroid got removed. I have a scar on my neck. It's fine. You don't see it, though. But this one where there was no, there's no denying. That, 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 to be that deep and that hard, no, you couldn't hide that. Yeah. So, no, if she was this vain person. It doesn't make sense. No, that doesn't make any sense. Police were already suspicious by eight days into the investigation. So both of her sons have died. Their family members decide to try to help the grieving mother by bringing silly string to celebrate her son's seventh birthday at his gravesite. They were captured by news, dancing, laughing, and singing with silly string at her son's grave, who was just freshly buried. Now, if you had seen the entire video, you would see a woman, again, who's supposedly very vain, never can find a picture before this, where she is not done to the T's. She is wearing oversized clothes. She has no makeup on. Her eyes are red. She's very puffy from crying. This was a forced reaction, because at the time... The family was just trying to help. And I understand what they were doing. Her sister's children were there. Darlie later commented on the video with... I mean, it was, like, heartbreaking. She goes... He wanted to be seven. I did the only thing I knew how to do to honor him and give him all his wishes because he wasn't here anymore. But how do you know how you're going to act when you lose not one but two children? Yeah, no, I don't like that. We've talked about that before. You can't, and they didn't show the entire clip. They also showed that video within the trial. Again, not the entire video. Not the part where she is sobbing. Not the part where it is very quiet and, and serious. They showed the... Itty bitty clip of how long does a bottle of silly string last? Ten seconds. Tops. You know, not long. <laughs> so four days after the gravesite ceremony, Darley was arrested and charged with capital murder. The trial began in January seventh, nineteen ninety seven. This is seven months after the death of her two children. Where in the fucking world, even before the panorama, do you have a capital death penalty case that happens within seven months? No, a, a capital death penalty case would take at least a year to go to trial. Yeah. They yeah. were rushing it. And I really think her defense attorney should have put the brakes on it and uh, did something for her, but you know. The prosecutor said the motive for the murder was money. She was in a large amount of debt and had life policies for both boys. There's no evidence that she was in a large amount of debt. She lived a very nice life. She had a home that they were able to put up for her bond of a million dollars. So obviously the debt wasn't that there wasn't anything in that extreme if they could put the freaking house up for her bond. And obviously her, uh, her family and her husband didn't think she did it, otherwise they wouldn't have put her bond up. Yeah. So her husband did have to sell the home to put up the million dollar bond. But it still shows that they had money. Yeah. They may not have had liquid Nobody cash. Nobody has a million dollars just sitting around. I'm yeah. sorry. You yeah, know? I mean, fucking benzos, but... Now, Even then, it's, like, caught up. Nobody has just a million dollars sitting there. Sorry. Continue. The The idea that she killed her two sons for a policy, you can kill your two children at $10,000 each, or you can kill your husband that has over 700000 Husband. If it's about money, husband. You know? Doesn't that make more sense? Also, mo- I feel like most people... I know this sounds horrible, but most people, like, the kids are above the husband. Like, you learn to... Pri- you prioritize... The kids more because the kids actually are dependent and need you versus the husband is a grown adult man and can take care of himself. Yeah. So when I look at when I look at a necessity in my life, like what the needs of my children become before the needs of my husband at this time in life. But I don't I don't see how that could ever change. 
in life. I don't I don't see how that changes. I don't. I, I, I kind of feel like I gave birth to these children. And that should go for the same for my husband, that our children come before them. Me, not me. Yeah. But anyway, I think that's normal. I, I think so. would feel like it is, but I mean, I don't know. Everybody's different, I guess. I think you still need to prioritize your marriage or you're not going to have one. <laughs> but yeah. still. And, and his, uh, his policy is actually over 800000 Yeah, so why? No, she, if it was about money, she wouldn't have killed the kid. She would have killed her husband. Yes. James Crone testified he was a crime scene consultant, an expert witness in this case, that the evidence suggested that the scene inside the re router residence had been staged. All right. Want to know a secret about expert witnesses? Yes. To be an expert witness, all you have to do is claim that you know more than the average person. There is no test. There is no way of proving. There is no evidence to show that an expert witness is an expert, besides that they can say they have more knowledge than the average person. That's stupid. And then expert testimony is held to a very high standard because people honestly don't know that. They think an expert witness is going to give them information that I is 100% no. the truth, but they can't. They're humans. You're going by, in your opinion. People don't hear the in my opinion part yeah. as they should. Learning all sorts of new things over here. There, yeah, there's no way to agree that his information was absolutely correct. I mean, this is also something that was brought up um, a lot in trial TikTok community because during the Josh Jugger trial, they had expert witness from one team and expert witness from the other team. And they the expert witnesses were trying to disprove each other. But really, like, when they got cross, one of the, I think it was the defense's expert witness on the um, computer stuff, mm -hmm. when they cross-examined her and the, like, the prosecution. And she contradicted herself? She contradicted herself multiple times. Yeah. So to me, that I was that's when I started questioning expert witnesses, but I did not know all this information you just gave me. Yes, and actually we talked about the persons, the persons, the people that actually went over this. Um, Alexis Link's letter and Billy Jensen. We uh, love them. Yes, they have a new season out. Actually, they have two new seasons out since we've listened. And they go over how expert testimony can convict innocent vis victims. Oh. So, you should listen to that. Just a side note. Her defense team was highly against her getting on the stand. Darlie are. did not listen, though, and was smashed on cross-examination. In her mind, she was thinking that she wanted the jury to hear that she did not do it. Um, wanted to hear it straight from her that, that she didn't do it. Yeah, that was her main focus of getting on the stand. I don't think she actually knew what would come besides the fact that she did not do it. She was suffering from postpartum depression. Her youngest was seven months old at the time. Just because yeah. you have postpartum depression does not mean you are going to Susan Smith your children. No. Okay, like, I, I don't know that she did this, but I really don't know that she did. There has been... So much evidence brought to me in various forms that I, I don't know. The chief medical examiner. So he worked for the prosecution because mm -hmm. he's a medical examiner. He works in the mm -hmm. other side. Stated that there was no way that her wounds were self-inflicted. Why did the jury think they were then? If a chief medical examiner, okay, he's a man has a lot of medical history. To say that it was not self-inflicted. But today, they think it was. You know what I mean? The jury, how well, How would you know? Yeah. You're a fucking jury. You're just normal people. What the jury probably, and I have not heard a jury person talk about it, but what they probably would remember most was the graveside ceremony that was actually played in court. But guess what? They only did the part where she's playing with silly string. That's ridiculous. Again, there's other and kids there. why didn't the defense stop that? Yeah, because you can, like, sit there. They go through discovery. This was going to be in the discovery. Why wasn't it brought to the judge's attention that this was not... The full clip. This was not full clip. This is not all the evidence. This was not evidence. This is just two seconds How of so a video that has nothing to do with anything in this trial. Yeah. Her the, the lawyer was shit. Jesus Christ. Yeah. The most crucial piece of evidence during the initial trial was a bloody sock found outside of the home. Prosecution claimed she planted it. But remember, there's no blood in the garage and her throat slit. The prosecutor said that she planted the sock. Now, this sock wasn't just like laying where it was going to be found immediately. Mm -hmm. This was like 175 yards from the property. So somehow she started trying to murder her children. Yep. Took a bloody sock, planted that, and then slit her own throat. All within eight minutes from the time that Damon 
was injured, he would have had eight minutes to live. Darlie was on phone with 911 for six minutes. Police arrived within three minutes. He was still alive when they got there. So how did she run a whole football field, slice her throat, and you can hear in the 911 call, she's not out of breath. She's she's scared, and yeah. you can hear the, the worry in her own voice, but she's not out of breath. And why would you go through all that work? What if the sock was never found? Yeah, if you're saying it wasn't, like, and I'm sorry, on the driveway. But again, she was a Barbie-looking girl. She wasn't, like, a mastermind. She wasn't a surgeon that can get that close to her artery and not kill herself. No. I, I just don't understand it. On February 4th of 1997, though, Darlie was convicted of murder and sentenced to lethal injection. She still is on death row today, still appealing. Although since her trial, there has been multiple DNA testing. While on death row, her, so her husband did stay on her side mm -hmm. up until 2011 when they both agreed to the divorce. Darlie stated he believes in her innocence. I'm sorry, Dar Darren, which is her husband, believed in her innocence and only filed for divorce to stop living in limbo. But he has now since remarried and continued, but he continues to say she's innocent. I mean, I understand getting divorced. I really do. In that I mean, I get it. It was almost 20 years yeah. of her being in prison. I get it. Yeah. I get it. Since her conviction, there have been multiple attempts to find unknown DNA in the case. There was an unknown fingerprint that they still don't know who it belongs to. Okay. That puts question right there if, she, if somebody else was in the house. Um, the Innocence Project did pick up her case in 2019, and there are multiple books based on this case. Some of her, in So there's some that show her as innocent and some that show her as guilty. The funny thing is, is ABC does one of both sides. Like, five years really? ago, did, does that she's guilty couple years ago does that she's innocent huh and it's like okay so which is it like you were the same network yeah I, I can see if other networks pick up different sides yeah but the same network putting out something yep. whether it's and I have actually got the so YouTube it's on YouTube the the latest thing that I've found on on shows for her it's called in last defense it was on ABC back in 2019 and it does show every like it shows all of the ways that she could be innocent and i do believe she deserves a second trial in my opinion i, I don't want to let a, a child kill her out but i do believe she should get another because it's like you said why did they not why was it not both her defense lawyer was shit yeah they put in to evidence things that weren't evidence this should be a mistrial there was suspicious activity in the neighborhood that other neighbors reported that were supposedly investigated but there's no proof of it the random fingerprint the injuries to her neck that are not self-inflicted there's she was in the hospital for two days there's scars along her neck and her picture that was just taken a couple weeks ago mm -hmm. like her updated jail picture mm -hmm. she had a stab wound to her arm where you would put your arm up in defense where she says he drops the knife well it, right it went all the way to her bone you didn't she do that also yourself. has you did not yeah you do not go all the way to nope. your bone she didn't do that and not over here that means you would have had to go from this angle down that's Who's impossible. Do, I mean, I mean, it's possible, but, but to do it to that force. So, and your hand would likely slip and get the blade. But guess what? Her hand was cut on the same arm that her hand was up. So it was like she grabbed the knife and realized, and then pulled back, and then got here uh, in her forearm. And I don't think she was actually asleep. I think it was just so traumatic That's that she was block. actually awake and doesn't remember it. If okay. she didn't do it. That is, if she didn't do it. I don't think she did. I don't see how. There are, so I, I did. The, I found out how many women are on death row right now. Okay. 51. Oh. And that is across 17 states. Now, where That's I... That's a very low number to me. I don't know 50. why that seems low. Because there's over... I remember looking for the men. Compared to men, it's very low. Okay. Now, I don't know if anyone knows about the Susan Smith case living in South Carolina. We know we all about, about it. it. But this happened 11 months after Susan Smith. Susan Smith was a national case. Mothers all over the country could not believe that this woman could kill her own children in that way because it wasn't something so widely talked about back then. But she confessed nine days after. Yeah. Darlie is now 20-something years in the making still claiming she's innocent. How do you continue that for eight up that long? You know what I mean? I would just be like, whatever. Like, at that point, at this just point, you're already caught. And they've offered to drop everything if she said that she did it mm -hmm. she refuses so she was given the ability to get it's off like death row we talked about with the james jordan case yeah if he just said it they would let him if they like if he said if they said yep. all he had to do was say it they let him out and he's not going to say it because he didn't, he didn't do, do it. it 
because he didn't do it. So there is a lot more on this case. Like if you want to see what they're doing DNA testing on right now, it has not been, like the results haven't been released yet. Um, the Innocence Project is working on it. When I've watched the original, I think it was Forensic Files or 2020. God, I love Forensic Files. I think Files. it was Forensic Files. I'm not sure. I think it was Forensic Files. They do make it look like she is very guilty, but they leave out all of the evidence. Like, they don't put the major evidence. They just pretty much put in that there was no real evidence of a break-in. They put in that there was, you know, I think the husband did it. Really? If, if somebody in that household did it, I don't see how not. I don't see how she would stab herself along the neck and the arm. To the fucking bone. That's where I'm caught. Y- yeah. Like, okay, the throw, you know, you could have just got real fucking lucky there. But I also think the husband probably didn't do it. I'm just saying, if someone in the house did it... It would have been the husband. I would have seen it would have been him. But I don't think he did it either. Because, like I said, there was suspicious activity in the neighborhood. Yeah. There was a black car that was seen in this neighborhood. Um, And their cars were parked in a different spot than normal. So it looks like they weren't home. So So it sounds like a home invasion went wrong. I mean... And, I mean, we're working, like, 25 years in the making now. Like, that person could be dead. Yeah. That actually killed these children and her life into prison. That's insane. And from what you're telling me, and I've seen some of this, I'm remembering now. I don't, I'm remembering, I don't think she did it. I really, really don't. I just, I just don't see how. My mind is just blown on it. But anyways, that's my case for this week. I, I don't think she did it. I don't think anybody in the household did it, but I'm, I'm with you of if somebody in the house did it, it would have been the husband, but I don't see that happening. There is an article that was just recently released, I don't know, a couple a couple weeks ago, but it goes over all the death, all of the inmates on death row in Texas, all the women. Mm-hmm. No, it was all the women in, in the country, I think. But her description is the most descriptive. Like, she's got the most information out of all of these women. Why? I don't know. It was very interesting to me. I'll, it'll be in the show notes. Anyways, that, that, that's all my case for this week. Wow. That was a ride. No, you want to know the best or the weirdest part? Yeah. Her husband married somebody they went to school with. Like, they were high school sweethearts, Darlie and Darlin, the husband and wife. And, I'm uh, sorry. Wait, I'm caught up on that name. I just now caught that. Darlie yeah. and Darlin. <laughs> yeah. That that's their cute. Name. And their son's names were Devin and Deanian. What's that And name? Drake. Don't. Drake um, actually battled leukemia. A couple Aww. years ago. But he's still alive. He still believes in his mother's innocence. Well, but be- his face, his Instagram is private or I would have lurked more. But he looks like a normal 22-year-old kid. I just got aged because I did not think about that child would be 22. Because it does not seem like that this year, that year was that long ago. Oh, Actually, God. he's older. Oh, God. 1996, so. I'm 27. I was 94. Okay. Wow. So any of our listeners that are older than us, because I know we have plenty of them, we just made y'all feel old, didn't we? <laughs> I mean, I was, I was, I was already elementary school when this happened. All right. Well, I think that is all we have for this week, guys. So be sure to follow us on all of our socials. Make sure you follow us on the Tickety Talk, the Instagram, the Facebook. Join our Facebook group, Crime and Chill Fam, to talk more crime with us. Read more about this case and tell me what you think. And make sure, I forgot to mention it in the episode we recorded a little bit ago, but make sure to rate and like us on Apple Podcasts and Spotify and like and subscribe on YouTube Machine so that we can get pushed higher. It's good for us to have a better rating. So if you don't mind taking that little bit of time, please do that. All right, but we will see you guys next week. Bye.